if you had a program that was on a disk or a tape or something, can you get that file in a position where that the so other do that? There, there are hardware solutions for this. A lot of very creative ones. Presume wow. You yeah. could find a computer that still had a floppy and floppy, right? Yeah, and that, that's the thing. That there, there are there are hardware solutions uh, for hooking up old old hardware to these machines. Uh, really good ones, in fact. I'd, I'd like to at some point get an SIO adapter so I can see if I can snag some of the stuff off of my old Atari disk before they all crumble into the Yeah, so get the space and figures up for your Atari 800. Yeah, yeah. Because that doesn't seem like a good thing. The, 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 the Big 20 and the C64 is <laughs> a, a cartridge, like a lot of the computers do. Yeah. Is there ways of getting the stuff off of those? There is. Um, the thing is, a lot of people have done the hardware for you online, um, and that's, unfortunately you get into the gray area because I had the cartridge, do I have the right to run it? Um, some would argue, yes you do, because, um, but I don't necessarily have the means to do it. Others would argue, you don't really have it unless you actually are prying ROMs off of there and reading it off of the machine itself. I, where, where I would follow that, if to be 100% on the on the side of good, would be figure out how to get it off of that machine. Yeah. There are programs where they can run on the actual hardware in order to do it. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. And I've got access to a deep ROM computer. Right. So one of the other lovely things about the Commodore 64 is it takes forever to load. Um, <laughs> Which is going to be a common theme with several of these machines. <coughs> Emulating the tape drive. <laughs> well, the uh, the Spectrum does emulate the tape drive, and I will do that to comedic effect later. Let me bring up the Atari real quick, because the Atari stuff isn't going to take nearly as long. So this is Atari 800, uh, which is an emulator for the autonomous Atari 800. You don't have the cartridge yet. I don't have any cartridges in there right now. Okay, here we go. Commodore, back to the Commodore. This is a game called Bastard Operator from Hell in the Server Room. Uh, it's released in 2002. It takes a little while for it to get its bearings, but once it does... And you have keyboard control, going to the server rooms, and you're trying to, from what I gather from this, from my really brief take a look at it, you're trying to get um, people out of your server rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so you can punch them, because you're really ineffective at this point, until you can get some... Enough of that one. You just went through <laughs> That was a fun one. All right, the Atari 800. My baby. I sent a note to Chris Crawford asking him if this stuff was on, in the public domain. He assured me that it was. A lot of these will uh, support joysticks as well. I know the Commodore stuff was kind of weird with the joystick though, so I never got it really working well when I tried. Okay, so this is the Atari 800. Excalibur. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, we won't be emulating the, the uh, Apple, unfortunately. No, 
You are Arthur, and you are trying to unite all of Britain in this game. Cool. Is that possible? <laughs> it is possible. Apparently people have won this game. I am not one of them. <laughs> Okay, so you go through, these, this is your nets of the round table, uh, with a lot of names backwards. Uh, so you have Sir Kay, you have Drawfrock, which is Crawford backwards, Serenus, which is Summers backwards, and Nostica, which is Atkinson backwards as well. You can gift, honor, banish, etc. You have the various lands that you can do tribute with, uh, attack, prestige, get news about, and then you have how much you want to uh, gather from these folks. I'm sorry, how much you have from these folks. And then, this is Merlin. And Merlin allows you to do things like see uh, different, uh, different rulers and such. <laughs> yeah, practice. There we go. No, it's 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 being really touchy with me. And then you can go outside and you can see the countryside and you can visit each of these different countries. Uh, places. This was some heady shit at the time. Let me tell you, being able to scroll. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> one other one. Eastern Front. This was the first one that had a, uh, a scrolling play field. Again, really a mess of the time. Your goal is you are, I believe, the, uh, the, Germ the Germans, and you're trying to take a, uh, get the Russians out of your backyard. I'm just going to do that move for the time being. Anywho, enough of that. This Highly recommended game. All right, let's get out of this. All right, Hatari, Hatari. Around here. <clears throat> so this is running off of a GNU operating system, or at least a GPL version of an operating. So you can boot stuff off of it. Um, it's actually a pretty, as much as I know of the uh, the Atari ST, which is not a whole heck of a lot. It's, it is uh, pretty faithful to what I recall of this. <coughs> so you can emulate such things as the Mega Bouncing Ball. <laughs> or we could actually go to the actual Amiga and do that. So why don't we do that? Actually, let me do one more thing. Now these are some pretty advanced machines for the time. It wasn't for a while before IBM computers, IBM uh, compatible computers, could actually do stuff like this with BGA. Um, and around the same time that this machine was released, you had stuff like CGA. Which has anybody seen the 8088 demo that they managed to get? Um, it was on a regular IBM PC computer. Um, apparently, it breaks all of the emulators out there, but it's pretty good stuff. Look up on YouTube 8088. Demo, I think is what it's called. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, up of that. Show you the Sinclair. 
<clears throat> I'm sorry, let's do the amina first. <clears throat> Now, some emulators spend their time trying to emulate everything about a particular machine. Uh, the Sinclair emulators, uh, some of the ones that are available on Windows, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Sinclairs, but <clears throat> this had 1K of RAM on it. And you could get a cartridge that you could put on the back of it. And the cartridge can give you 16K of, of memory which was phenomenal. The problem was that if you so much as bumped this machine and managed to knock that cartridge loose, it would cause it to crash. There's an emulator out there that has a, a selection for the wobbly desk or something along those lines, <laughs> which eventually, every randomly, will crash your machine. Why you would want that can only be because you have fond memories of losing all of your stuff. <laughs> it's inexplicable, but there you have Real it. Real accuracy. Yes. Uh, uh, promote saving. The, so you have games like this for the Amiga. Now see if I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the floppy disk noise. Yeah. So this is Katakis, which is available from the company Factor 5. It's a side-scrolling shooter. It takes a little bit for it to get its stuff together. That's a little bit of this, obviously. <coughs> <coughs> 